There's no question that Batman has the most iconic rogues gallery. You may have never even picked up a comic in your life, but you're still familiar with folks like the Joker, Riddler, Catwoman, and of course, Polka Dot Man. I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Comics, and here are the 10 best Batman villains you totally forgot existed. Number 10, Dr. Aesop. One of a number of different characters introduced by Paul Dini and Dustin Wen during their criminally underrated stint on Batman in the late aughts, Dr. Aesop is a crime lord that punishes his victims by using the lessons of Aesop's fables. It may sound silly as a concept, but hey, so does the Riddler or the Penguin. Because most of the stories revolve around ferocious animals, Dr. Aesop has a seemingly endless supply of creatures to use for his crimes, including lions, bears, wolves, and foxes. Because he forces his victims to endure potentially lethal trials to learn a moral lesson, Dr. Aesop sounds akin to the horror icon Jigsaw rather than the ancient Greek author. Interestingly, Dr. Aesop has only ever had one brief encounter with Bruce Wayne, and he wasn't even in his Batman persona. Number 9, Professor Radium. Batman number 8, which was published all the way back in 1942, introduced Henry Ross, a professor who used a radium serum to reanimate the dead. That may sound like the behavior of a typical mad scientist and Batman foe, but Ross had nothing but noble intentions. He didn't care about fame or fortune. All he cared about was bettering mankind. But believing he needed a human test subject to prove his research worked, the professor took his own life and had a colleague resurrect him with the serum. Despite the fact his revival was a success, Ross's skin turned and green and left him highly radioactive. So terrified he would kill anyone in his proximity, Ross, now dubbed Professor Radium, stole technology and experimental chemicals, hoping to undo the effects on his body. Over time, the radium made his mind completely unstable, turning him into a full-blown supervillain. After his debut issue, the green-skinned scientist didn't return for over 60 years and has only made six appearances in total. This is a huge shame since Professor Radium is a tragic, complex figure who deserves a lot more credit. Number 8. Abattoir. Born Arnold Etchison, the future serial killer was unstable from a young age, believing everyone he met was wicked. To rid the world of evil, Etchison slaughtered most of his family before being defeated by Batman. Due to his unhinged mind, Etchison, now calling himself Abattoir, believed that taking lives endowed him with power and wisdom. After breaking out of Arkham Asylum, the maniac was set on murdering 600 people specifically, believing this number would grant him immortality. What makes Abattoir so terrifying, of course, is that he is so simple. He doesn't dress up in a supervillain costume or leave cryptic clues around the city. He's just a textbook serial killer who enjoys killing, although serial killers should probably give you the clue there. Since there's no rhyme or reason to his crimes, Batman has great difficulty predicting Abattoir's next murder spree too. Sadly though, Abattoir died only three years after his debut. Surprisingly, he wasn't revived in the New 52 or Rebirth, and has remained absent from the comics for nearly 30 years. So, instead of having Batman fight the Penguin or Ra's al Ghul for like the millionth time, it would be nice for the comics to revisit this classic but overlooked villain. Number 7. Film Freak the majority of Batman's enemies have some kind of twisted fixation. The Mad Hatter's crimes revolve around Alice's adventures in Wonderland. Two-Face is obsessed with choice and the number two, the Riddler can't say anything without turning it into a riddle, and as you can guess from Film Freak's name, the deranged sociopath is obsessed with cinema. He fantasized about movies for so long, he began recording himself committing acts of vigilantism, pretending to be in a movie. He thought his clips would be more exciting if he played the role of a villain, and so decided to become a killer. Throughout the years, he stabbed a woman in the shower to death as a homage to Psycho, he released a wild gorilla in Gotham as a nod to King Kong, and he even tried to blow up a city as a love letter to Dr. Strangelove. In Catwoman number 58, Zatanna glimpsed into his mind and confirmed that Film Freak actually has no real memories. Instead, his mind consists of film clips of his life that look stylized and edited. 
implying that Film Freak truly believes he is living inside a movie. Good thing Satana has never looked into my mind, otherwise she'd be shocked to see all of my memories are in fact various Simpsons quotes in disguise. Number 6. The Flamingo In case you were wondering, Flamingo isn't so called because he eats shrimp or habitually stands on one leg. He's called Flamingo because that's literally just his name. Eduardo Flamingo was an enforcer who tried taking down a corrupt conglomerate called the Penitente Cartel. When the mobsters captured Eduardo, they performed brain surgery on him, removing his ability to feel compassion, allowing him to become their personal assassin. With his lack of empathy, Flamingo became one of the most efficient killers in the entire world. The avian-themed hitman's fighting prowess is truly phenomenal, allowing him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best fighters, including most of the Bat family. He nearly killed Jason Todd during one fight, and just when you thought it couldn't get worse, Flamingo is also a cannibal. After he offs his victims, he devours their flesh earning him the nickname, the Eater of Faces. Although most mercenaries use discretion while pursuing their targets, Flamingo has a flair for the dramatic. While on the hunt, he sports a flamboyant suit and mask while driving a pink motorcycle because he wants his prey to know he's coming. Number 5. St. George In 2016's Batman number 48-50, Batman faced one of the most terrifying supervillains ever committed to print, the English. Only joking, it was St. George, a man who grew up to despise superheroes believing they've overshadowed true heroes like Charles Darwin, Alan Shepard and George Washington. To prevent his idols from being forgotten, St. George dressed up as his heroes and committed acts of vigilantism in their name. Now there are plenty of nut jobs in Gotham who put on a costume and a mask and think they're a big shot, but St. George is different. When he dresses up as George Washington, he convinces himself he is the first American president and will act, move, and speak like him. At one point, he takes on the character of Balto the Husky, forcing him to only communicate through barking, so yeah, this, this guy has issues. Number 4. Scare Beast Even though Batman is one of the most celebrated superheroes of all time, most of his rogues gallery has one major problem. They suck at fighting. Since the Dark Knight is one of the world's greatest martial artists, criminals like the Penguin, Two-Face, or even just the Riddler, really dunking on the Riddler in this list, come to think about it, don't really pose a physical threat. Another iconic supervillain that has this problem is Jonathan Crane, aka the Scarecrow. The deranged Doctor relies on his fear toxins to take down the Cape Crusader, since he's not much of a real scrapper. But in the story, as the crow flies, we saw a far more sinister version of the character. After the Penguin learned that several of his colleagues had betrayed him, he injected Scarecrow with a serum, transmogrifying him into a gigantic monster called the Scare Beast. Standing 10 foot tall and possessing super strength and endurance, Batman had to give his all to stand a chance against this monstrosity. Scare Beast also naturally produces a fear-inducing spore more potent than his traditional toxins, making him far more dangerous. Considering how petrifying this incarnation of the character is, it's bizarre he's never reappeared after this story. Number 3. Nocturna Her name may not ring a bell, but Nocturna is one of the most dominant criminals in all of Gotham. She has the power of metamorphosis, intangibility, teleportation, healing, mind control, super strength, and immortality. Oh yeah, and she's a freaking vampire too. As you would expect, the sinister succubus can amplify her power by consuming blood and transforming her victims into mindless lackeys with a single bite. What makes Nocturna work as a villain is that she relies on outsmarting her enemies rather than by using brute strength, like most of Batman's best enemies. Even though she primarily dukes it out with Batwoman, she has had several altercations with Batman too, and it would be cool to see her become a more regular foe against the Bat family once again. Number 2. Santa Claus As his name suggests, Santa Claus is a German supervillain who commits crimes while dressed as jolly old Saint Nick. During Christmas time, he hands out presents to anyone who happens to pass him by. Most people assume he's a normal street Santa and are more than willing to accept a free gift from him. He's a telepath and uses his abilities to look into people's minds to gauge whether they've been naughty or nice. If they've been naughty, he will hand them a gift-wrapped bomb that will detonate once it's been opened. Unfortunately, Claus's moral standards are so high he deems most people as naughty, basically having the same gimmick as Futurama's Robot Santa. 
What makes Claus worse though is that he encourages homeless kids to be his elves to help him hand out presents, turning innocent children into his accomplices. Jolly old Santa Claus has only made three appearances, but he's such a bonkers villain it would be nice to see him again. I mean, who doesn't want to see Batman beating the crap out of Father Christmas? And number one, the broker and the carpenter. I've spoken at length in other videos about how Paul Dini and Dustin Nguyen's Streets of Gotham is incredibly underrated, and well, I'm gonna do it here again too. One of the coolest things about their stint on Detective Comics was that they weren't afraid to introduce new villains. Together, the pair introduced several rogues, including the aforementioned Aesop, but also a new incarnation of Scarface known as Peyton Riley. Arguably Arguably the two best characters introduced while the pair had the reins on Batman though were the Carpenter and the Broker, two villains designed to answer one long running question many readers had had regarding Gotham for ages. Where, oh where do those villains get their wonderful hideouts? Yeah, well, it turns out it's mostly these two. The carpenter builds these elaborate death traps, while the broker is the real estate agent who sells them the space. Both characters were great additions to the Bat mythos, and it's a shame no other creator has saw fit to use them since Dini and Nguyen moved on to different projects. And those were the 10 best Batman villains you totally forgot existed. Know of any other obscure Bat rogues you think they need to use more? Let us know in the comments below. Hello. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe to What Culture Comics too, so you don't miss another upload going forward. I've been Ewan, I won't stop yelling about Streets of Gotham until you finally read it, goddammit, and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye!